With that, I would like to invite Hokuto from Cookpad to talk about what did Cookpad do for machine learning uh, on containers. So I'll switch over to Hokuto. Hokuto. Thank you, Asif. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Uh, thanks for coming to our session. My name is Hokuto Hoshi. Uh, I'm the head of the uh, infrastructure at Cookpad and responsible for site reliability engineering. Today, uh, we are going to sh uh, share the story of uh, how we built the containerized uh, machine learning workload on AWS. How many of you know Cookpad? Hmm? Okay, yeah. First, uh, let me introduce our company. <clears throat> Do you like cooking? Do you like cooking? <laughs> Cookfat is an online recipe sharing and search service. Uh, we are based in Japan and were founded in 1998. Since uh, 1998, uh, Cookfat has been providing uh, online recipe sharing and search services. Our corporate mission is make everyday cooking fun, and uh, our services currently hosts over 2.7 million user-generated recipes and uh, uh, with about 60 million users in Japan uh, visiting us each month. It is the largest online recipe sharing and search service in Japan. And we are global. We are operating in 67 countries and support 21 languages. For the United States, you can access our service at cookfat.com slash US. We have offices in Japan and UK and Spain, Indonesia, and so on. We have about 150 developers to host the services with nine SREs and nine machine learning engineers to support. We have been learning uh, all systems on AWS since 2011. We are using ECS for our service, and we run over 200 ECS services. Now, uh, let us explain cooking log in Japanese, yori kiroku, which is uh, our first deep learning product feature. Have you taken photos when you cook? Some people yeah, take uh, photos of what they cook and eat uh, to record and look back on the memories. Uh, that is to monitor their dietary habit or uh, to share them with family and friends and communities. However, sometimes uh, it is troublesome to find such food photos from your smartphone camera roll uh, manually. In order to make that process easier, we developed cooking log which automatically finds food photos from your camera roll. It is powered by convolutional neural network, which is one of their logics for machine learning. So uh, let's watch a demo video of this feature. This is a video of um, Android smartphone. As we can see, uh, there are many kinds of photos uh, in the camera roll. And there are some food photos. Uh, however, uh, there are also other kinds uh, of photos like um, aquarium and uh, flower and uh, scenery and so on. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, nimono, which is one of my favorite Japanese foods. People who want to keep a record of uh, their dishes uh, launch the Cookfat app and select the cooking log. So, <clears throat> loading photos from camera roll. Yeah. As we just saw, the food photos were automatically uploaded and archived. This is a uh, feature. This feature is now used by many users. Today, uh, over 140,000 users have stored over 12 million food photos. Let me introduce this feature from the technical side. It is our first feature that, uh, that is using deep learning. So uh, there are some challenges. 
It was the first time for us to run a semi-real-time image classification with production. And that workload was different from common web applications. What we especially needed in developing such features was the scalable infrastructure for new workloads and our isolated environment for new challenges. We built it using AWS and containers. I will explain what scalable infrastructure is first. We needed a scalable infrastructure that enabled massive photo uploading uh, and semi-real-time image classification. Because clients send a lot of tiny thumbnails every time they take photos. This traffic is difficult to predict. There was also the possibility that uh, traffic could spike uh, when this feature was introduced on television. For better user experience, uh, we have to keep this feature at a constant performance at all times. So uh, we choose an um, asynchronous architecture. Uploading and classification takes a few milliseconds or longer, and it sometimes blocks our application processing that was written by Ruby on Rails. We decided to use the pre-signed URL of Amazon S3 and upload the image directly from the client to S3. Also, uh, we enabled uh, S3 notification. It has requests of classification for uploaded thumbnails to S uh, SQS queue. In order to carry out deep learning in production, isolation of the environment was also necessary. Image classification, uh, uh, sorry, Image classification software was written using a different language than we used, and it has a different workload from web application. Finally, in many cases, software for deep learning demands GPUs. This is a clearly different point from the web application that we have developed in the past. So we decided to create such an environment in a container. Containers can isolate a uh, new language environment and GPU driver and various settings. We run uh, this container on ECS with G2 extra large instances. In addition, Amazon ECS provides a managed and scalable Docker environment, which makes it easy to scale. Also, we had already run a lot of containers on ECS. Let me introduce the architecture of this feature using figures. At first, uh, the client requests our API server to issue a pre-signed URL of S3. The API generates and returns it to the client. Next, the client uploads a very small thumbnails to the S3 bucket. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we enabled S3 notification so the S3 enqueues the event to SQS when the image upload is completed. The image classification that is running on ECS decues the event from SQS and downloads the thumbnail and classifies it. After that, results of classification are sent to the API server. The API server removes, removes uh, images that is uh, not classified as food. This is my architecture. With direct upload to S3 and using SQS, we could build a scalable architecture without preparing an image upload server. Even if a amount of uploaded images increases, the image classification that is running on ECS scales out quickly uh, depending on the queue length of SQS. The API server only needs to issue the pre-signed URL of S3 at first, and then wait for classification results from uh, ECS. So uh, what is happening in the container? I will hand it off to Yuichiro, and he will explain the image classification in detail. Is my Mac on? Cool. Uh, thanks, Hakuto. 
Uh, hey, I, I'm going to take over the session, and then I'll talk about uh, a bit more detail about what is happening inside the container. Well, I'm Uchilo. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here uh, on stage. I bought a new jacket for today. <laughs> then, uh, I'm, I, I've been working for Cookpad for one and a half year, and uh, I'm, I'm working as an engineer in research and uh, uh, our research and development division, uh, which means that my specialty is that uh, I'm, I'm in charge of making sure that our researchers can access our data or GPU uh, computation environments easily and fast, uh, concentrated on their creativities. Uh, this is, yeah, anyways. Uh, first, I'm going to explain what that uh, the actual task in the ECS cluster, uh, ECS container, uh, is actually doing uh, from the aspect of containerization of machine learning. Well, uh, as Hokuto explained before, uh, the task, uh, the, the, the things task doing is that task first gets the image from the S3, and also task will uh, they cure the, the, the uh, message from the SQS. And also to get, uh, sorry, the, uh, the, the task first uh, download the classifier, yeah, the model from the S3, and they set it up. And the task also, the, they queue the message from the SQS and download the image from the S3. Yeah, that's, that's right. And the, the task next, uh, doing the, the actual image classification and send the result back to the API server. That's it. So uh, what we need to develop is, uh, are basically two things uh, to make the whole system work, uh, which is the classifier, of course, and the, the, the Docker image, uh, which actually doing the, 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 the procedure I explained. Uh, and uh, maybe as uh, Asif, Explain the class, classifier could be a uh, set of large files, so it's it better to store it in S3, which is a scalable, durable, uh, and capable of handling the large files. Um, yeah. And developers or researchers build their uh, model, train it, and uh, save it uh, to, the, to the S3. That's the first thing to do. And the developer also uh, needs to, 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 to implement the task itself. Uh, yeah. And, and also, uh, when we use the ECS, uh, we need a task definition, of course. Yeah. The, for the task, uh, ECS task definitions, uh, we like to, to, to uh, uh, we, we liked it to, 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 to make it easy to manage or easy to write also. Uh, so that the, each developer can write it uh, for, for their own applications. Uh, and with that communicating with the uh, SRE team, for example. Uh, there is an open source Ruby library called HAKO, H -A -K -O, uh, which is developed by uh, one of our engineers. And uh, we are utilizing it to, 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 to write the task definition down by YAML format file and uh, manage it, it on the uh, version control systems. Yeah, on the right, right hand side, we, you, you can see the one example of the Hackle uh, task definition file for ECS. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to explain the reason why we don't directly call the ECS API, but instead we use Hackle and uh, the call the ECS API in directory. Uh, first of all, we needed to perform uh, higher level operations on, on the ECS, like deploy the new version of application or roll back it. And uh, according to that, uh, uh, for example, the git commit hash or revision or uh, whatever you want to refer when you, uh, uh, when you decide which version to deploy or roll back. And we also have a, a common or repetitive uh, common, uh, common and repeatedly operations like uh, injecting sec uh, security uh, environment vari variables or, uh, or maybe the registering the service to our own local uh, DNS or 
uh, we, we may use another proxy container. We, we may need another proxy container for logging. Uh, those kind of the common and uh, repetitive operation, operation is, is, is frequently appears, right? And uh, yeah, I think it, it's, it's also, uh, I think the, in, in most cases, uh, each company or each team has this kind of you know, operations, set of operations we need to perform every time uh, deploy a new version of the application. Yeah, things like that. So for these reasons, uh, we use Hackers functionality to perform uh, deploying and rollback operations, and also um, making use of a uh, pluggable script architecture, uh, where we can trigger an arbitrary operations before or after deployment. And uh, as a result, uh, our process of deploying a new application or a new version is, uh, is very easy so that each developer can, can, can do it, with it without much communication with infra team. Now, uh, we have a task implementation and it's a uh, Docker image and a task definition file all set up. And now I'm gonna be a little bit more detailed about, uh, uh, about the task itself. Uh, since those uh, GPU accelerated instances had much higher throughput of image classification uh, compared to the other CPU instances in a, in a, in a similar price ranges. Uh, so that, that's the reason we decided to use a GPU accelerated instances for this workload. I'm, I'm talking about the inferences in the own production application. And uh, we, would, uh, we would show you some uh, tips or practices from our experiences uh, running GP workers on ECS for a while. Well, the first of all, uh, to run GP workers on ECS, uh, we first need to, to configure the dedicated AMI for a cluster. Uh, because uh, NVIDIA driver of a GPU consists of uh, uh, user libraries such as uh, shared object or kind of modules, uh, which are needed to be installed to the cluster, not in the container. And uh, uh, because both kernel module and the user library are tightly bound, I mean, talking about the NVIDIA driver, uh, is tightly bound in their version. Uh, so it is better to install both kernel module and the user libraries uh, together to the cluster, and not separately, uh, I mean, together to the cluster. Uh, this is, uh, yes. Uh, on the, on the other hand, the things like a CUDA toolkit uh, can be placed on the task. There's a kind of practice. Uh, since it could be, you know, a CUDA toolkit, things like that could be changed in, in the version uh, depending on the task. So that's, that's better to store in the, in, in the container, installed in the container. Yeah. This practice is, is is well explained in NVIDIA's NVIDIA Docker documentation. Yeah, you can check that. And, and at last, uh, in, in ECS, when we're using the container with the GPU, we need to, 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 to set a privileged flag that would open the, 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 the privileged access to the GPU device, right? And uh, we, need, we need to set that flag. And uh, actually, that was a situation at the time we, ha we, we first uh, we, we first released this application. Now we have uh, more detailed options like Linux parameters, uh, uh, Linux parameters devices options. So uh, we are now kind of working on the migrating from the privileged mode to, to, to Linux parameters options. All right. So now, now we have almost everything set up. I'm going to continue with a detailed explanation on how we built a food or a non-food image classifier in our project. So I'm gonna talk about the machine learning from now. Well, all right. So uh, some of you may already know that uh, image classification 
in, in, in the area of deep learning, it's, it may be said to be uh, the solved problem, which means that regarding to the result from the, the recent uh, academic uh, competitions, uh, the models can distinguish things better than human. So it is true that we can build working classifier by just collect enough number of uh, labeled data sets, uh, this time food photos from Cookpad, and no food photos. No food photos is a random food from the open data set. Yeah, may, may include some food photos, but it's, it's only a few. And then uh, and we can just perform a supervised learning using the, the labeled data set. The model could be one of those famous pre-trained models like Inception from Google or ResNet or VZZ, for example. Yeah, that sounds like working. But after we shaped out our first version of the classifier, we gradually got direct feedback from our users, which says that there is still notable number of non-food photos mistaken as food which means that, we, that the user has uh, the, the, the foodable plushies on the calendar. Yeah, we got this kind of feedback. And the, yeah, I'm gonna be more, more detailed about the problem. The background of this problem is called uh, open set problem, which means like uh, limitation of the domain of the data set. Yeah, I have, I have much things to discuss about it, but no, no. Uh, we we'll, won't we'll really go detail about it right now on the stage, so we can discuss about it later. And then, uh, let's say it's easy to construct a food data set. We can just collect the food photos. But for non-food, it's hard for us to, to, to construct the, the, the data set from all, every single thing other than foods, like cars, chairs, humans. And instead, we, it is the usual practice that uh, we we uh, have only one level, level known food, which is called op open set here. And then uh, the, the, the put random photos into the data set, known food data set. And uh, let's say we have no photos of plushes in the data set, not specifically this photo, no, no, no plushes in the data set. The model could be to check it about this, uh, his answer uh, when, when, when the model uh, account, uh, uh, <laughs> the, the model gets the photos of plushes, the model could be shaky in, in his answer. So that is the background of a problem. And um, so what we did is by investigating the results from our local test set, hopefully we have the various things which is, looks like food. And we, uh, we rebuilt the data set uh, in, uh, we reviewed, reviewed the data set according to the investigation. Uh, more specifically, we put the, the, the brushes as a one, you know, a separated level, for example. Yeah. The, that thing is not that simple, but <laughs> yeah. And we succeeded to increase the accuracy in our model. Yeah. 97.9% uh, .9 accurate. That's good. And all right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on to the next topic. As, um, uh, as I introduced myself before, as I, I'm an engineer in the research and development division. Uh, I've been interested in making it possible for our uh, researchers, data scientists, uh, do their work easier and faster. Uh, now I'm gonna talk about our, talk about our infrastructure where we are doing, uh, using the AWS GPU instances for various uh, experiences, experiments, sorry. Uh, let me move on, ah, uh, sorry, uh, 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 uh. yes. Okay. So we, we are using the EC2 uh, GPU accelerated instances like G23 or PT23 uh, for our exper experiments on the data scientists, sciences, not only in the production, of course. And uh, uh, we, we wanted those instances uh, on demand so that uh, our researchers conduct their experiments in parallel. 
uh, multiple resources can conduct the multiple uh, uh, e experiments in parallel. That, that's, that's the spec. And uh, because of that, we make use of uh, Amazon machine images to, to realize repetitive provisioning of those commonly used components like uh, GPU driver or CUDA toolkit or uh, uh, CU DNN maybe. And then uh, we are also making, uh, making use of the chatbot on Slack uh, as an interface where anyone in, in, in the channel can create, start, stop instances using those AMIs. Yeah. And one more thing here is uh, uh, using Packer by Hashcorp. Uh, we can automate the, the provisioning steps. Uh, as I said, installing the NVIDIA driver or CUDA to the kit uh, so that we can uh, up, update the AMI fast and stable ways. Yeah, like this. And of course, uh, there, is, uh, there is a managed AMI for deep learning. Yeah, some of you may already know that uh, the, the AWS, uh, AWS has a managed AMI for, 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 the, for the latest version of CUDA, for example. So, which is actually not available, was not available at the time we started using GPUs, so we are now, you know on the way to, to, to migrating from our in-house AMIs to managed AMIs. Anyways. Oh, all right, that is so. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna wrap up the session. Uh, we introduced a cooking log uh, using deep learning at scale, adopted asynchronous and isolated architecture with ECS. Yeah, and uh, we also make very great, great use of uh, AWS's GPU accelerated instances for our experiments. All right. So, <laughs> yeah, I know you're hiring. Yeah, we have the two main offices in Japan and the, and the UK, Bristol. Yeah, if you're inter interested in our, you know, machine learning infrastructure, you know, you, you can contact us. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>